Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Mount Zion Primitive Baptist Church, St. Petersburg, Florida. Today is Sunday, November 12, 2023. Let us pray. The gracious and heavenly Father, we come before you as humbly as we can. Lord God, thanking you. Lord God, praising you. Lord God, just lifting up your holy, holy name. Thank you, God, for keeping us from last week until today. Thank you for waking us up. Even when we woke up, waking with a little ache and pain. Lord God, thank you. And so, Lord God, we continue to lift up this nation. We continue to pray for our government. We continue to pray for our president, and we continue to pray for the church, each and every believer there is, so we lift them up. Whatever they're standing in the need of, Lord God, we lift them up. For those families who are grieving, Lord God, we lift them up. Those families who are dealing with sickness in their families, Lord God, we lift them up. For those in the hospital rooms, Lord God, we lift them up in the name of Jesus. Then your people, which has humbled themselves and prayed, then we will hear from heaven. So now, Lord God, we lift up the nation of Israel. We pray for those that are in the war-torn areas and for those who have lost lives. But Lord God, we know that you know what's going on. You knew it before it even happened on October 7th. So Lord God, we just continue to just pray for the nation of Israel and lift them up. So as we come to study your word this morning, Lord God, something that's familiar to some of us and not to others. I ask that you decrease, Lord, but increase the mighty power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, my prayer is that everyone who is hearing my voice this morning, don't just be hearers, but be doers of your word. So in Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. 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 Uh, our condolences still to the Proto family, also to Daisy Wise and to the Hallbrook family and also their niece. Uh -huh. And uh, I want to take a moment to acknowledge and wish a happy 12th anniversary to my prayer group called Royal Women of Faith. Uh, the, my demand scripture is those who thought hunger and thirst after righteousness. So happy 12th anniversary. Amen. And God bless each and every one of you. And I'm so glad that I didn't know that I needed that 12 years ago, <laughs> but it's still here. Amen. We'll be celebrating later on today. Awesome. All right, let's get on into the lesson. Get into the lesson. My title is titled Freedom to Love. I got it just right this time. Freedom to Love. And we're going to jump to Romans 13, verse 8 through 10. And then we have 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 8 through 13. And both of the authors of these books is the Apostle Paul. So in, in Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 7, Paul has been writing uh, to the church in Carmel. It is so relevant, relevant to us today about the government and Christians' relationship to it. So if you wanted to get some background, he, just, he addresses this. It is so relevant that we, that we should be guided by this today. And he tells the readers in those seven verses that they are obligated to obey and to honor the rulers. So if in, in our country, the president, our government, and to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and to pay taxes. I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's the law. Yes. That's the law, and that's the word. That's, that's the word. Right. That's the word. Then he goes on into the verses 8 through 10, dealing with love. Dealing with love, what kind of motivates you to be in obedience mm -hmm. to everything else. Yes. And so we start off with verse number 8, chapter 13, Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. Now I'm not saying, because I'm going to wait and hold on to you and tell me I can't get along and get a car or house. That's not what we're talking about here. The debt that we're talking about is the debt of sin. The debt of sin. So love no one except love one another. We need to learn to love one another. Yes. 
Christian can have no debt, but rather have the debt. So he says, and then it says here, for the love, but he who loves one another has fulfilled the law. The love of Jesus is the evidence to others because coupled with the word, that, you know, because what we know about the word love, love is an action word, yes. not an emotion word. Yes. Well, we know it is emotion, but in what Paul is talking about, he's talking about putting it into action. Mm-hmm. Putting it into action. Yes. And then others should be able to see the evidence that you love. Mm-hmm. And coupled with you saying the word, I love, mm-hmm. and putting it into action, it gives proof that you are now following the laws of God. Yes. Okay? And then he goes on in verse number nine. He said, well, the commandments says, calls out five of the Ten Commandments. You should not commit adultery. You should not murder. You should not steal. You should not bear false witness. You should not covet. And if there is, is, and if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this same name, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. So here it is. Paul is saying, if I love, because I love, I ain't gonna cheat. Mm-hmm. Because I love, I won't murder, I won't destroy you. Because I love you, I ain't gonna steal. Because I love you, I ain't gonna lie on you. Right. And because I love you, I ain't gonna be jealous of you. Right, right. So these are all actions of things that we do to one another of the commandments. It says, so all the things that motivate me should be out of love. Mm-hmm. So we sum up. It says, so you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Well, who is my neighbor? Any person that you come in contact with. It ain't just your, you know, my kids would say, the next door neighbor, no. <laughs> it is your neighbor. And, it's, and, and let me help them. I mean, it's strangers. Come on, I got little strangers. Yeah, you know, and you should not do any harm to them either. Right. You got to put it into action. Yes. Love. And we're not talking about the love that, the brotherly love, or the love between a relationship between a man and a woman. But we're talking about the agape, godly love. Uh-huh. That we must love one another and love it. Then it says, Verse 10 says, love does no harm to a neighbor. And therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. We love them by seeking of our their best interest in doing it. That's how we love. We love by seeking the best and just doing it. Without holding back yourself. Love. That's love. That is how you love one another. Love when your neighbor, one of the second greatest commandments there is, is to love thy neighbor as thyself. I don't know about y'all, but I love me. I know it. Yes. I love me. Mm-hmm. I ain't got no hangups. Mm-hmm. I ain't got no insecurities. I just love me. Mm-hmm. Yes. And because I love me, I want to be able to show that love to others. I love, and that's what he's talking about, loving. Now, we switch to chapter 13 in 1 Corinthians. Mm-hmm. Everybody's somewhat familiar with chapter 13, they call it the love chapter. Yes. Corinthians chapter 13 is part of Paul's teaching on the spiritual gifts given to members of Christ's spiritual body. Uh-huh. He was urging them the desire for better gifts, and that's what they were talking about, and how they, but he was also trying to let them know how to use the spiritual gifts. Uh-huh. And he closes off at the end of chapter 12, verse 31, he says, but there is a most excellent way, and that excellent way is love. Yeah. See, they were so hung up on gifts, and what the, the use of the gifts. Uh-huh. But Paul said, let me let me break it down and explain. I know it doesn't cover this in our lesson today, but so I'm gonna read 
verses from chapter 13, verse 20, all verses 1 to 7. He says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging symbol. Some of the prophecy, but that was one of the most coveted positions in the early church to have next to being an apostle. Mm-hmm. And if God didn't call you as an Jesus and call you as an apostle, you couldn't have that covenant position. So they were looking forward to being able to prophesy. That means that God has spoken to you, got a revelation. Yeah. But Paul is saying, if you do all of this and you ain't got love, he said, the stuff that you're talking and saying don't mean nothing. It's just noise that you need. Mm-hmm. Because of love and motivation. It says, though I have to give a promise and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and love, and I have all faith so that I can move, remove mountains, but I have not love, I have nothing. We go back. Speaking in tongues was being able to speak in the language. I jumped to the verse two before I got covered verse one. But speaking in tongues, that was something that people in the church, they would just break out and start speaking in tongues yeah. based on how it was on the day of Pentecost mm-hmm. for them. So they were so enthralled with being able to speak in tongues in the church. But Paul is still saying, whether you got the gift of prophecy mm-hmm. or you got the gift of tongues. Yes. If you just not motivated with love, mm-hmm. it means absolutely nothing. And then he says, and though I bestow, I mean give away all my goods to feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burned, that means being martyred, that was happening in the early church. But I have not love, it profits me nothing. So even if I right now in the day that I want to just give away my money, but I'm gonna stand around here and brag about it. Mm. Yes. Means nothing. No, that's right. And though I wanna sacrifice, I tell I want to sacrifice myself for the betterment of the church, but I'm publicizing it. Mm. So I can get me some hits. Mm. All right, influences. It says, if it's motivated with selfish acts, mm-hmm. it means nothing. Because right. you got love out. Mm-hmm. You let it out. And then he gives a description of what love is in verses four to five. He said, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It ain't puffed up. Love don't brag on itself. That's right. yeah. And then yeah. love does not behave rudely. None does it seek its own. Love ain't selfish. Uh-huh. It's not provoked. Y'all can just slap love. Love is not in it. <laughs> Thinks no evil. See, love always looks for the best in people. Yeah. Love is for the best in people. And all of these things about love is what love is. See, I always, in my old church, they call it the polka dot church, they used to be a sign up over the door thing that you could see from the, the, from the pulpit straight ahead. It would say, the sign says, God is love. Yeah. And as a little girl, I used to be fascinated with that sign. Because I had to turn around and say, love is God. God is love. So, with all of these things, we can attribute these to the characteristics of who God is. He is He is kind. He doesn't envy. God don't puff himself up because he got it. Yes. And he and the way he behaves towards us. And he looks at he is no evil. And I'm so glad about that because of the things that we do with God. That when he looks upon us, he still sees us as love. Yes. He sees us as love. And then verse number six says, love it does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Yes. yes. Don't get caught up in rejoicing about sin, mm-hmm. but when it comes to God's truth, it rejoices. Yes. And it yes. bears all things. I mean, it covers all our faults. Mm-hmm. Believes in all things, means all, mm-hmm. hopes all things, and endures all things. That's what love does. Yes. That's love. Yeah. That's what Paul is talking about. He said, so I need to explain to y'all what love is because you all are so caught up in the gifts mm-hmm. and making sure that you got a gift in the body of believers. Yeah. 
But your gift don't mean nothing without love. All right, yeah. And if your motivation is for self, it still means nothing. Nothing. It means nothing. So then, well, that's the gift then. In verse number eight, some Bible says charity, but it says love never fails. Yes. Love never fails. Since God is eternal, God is love. Yes. Love is eternal, and love will never fail. It ain't gonna never fail. He says, so when God was talking about prophecies, he says, where there are prophecies, they will fail. Well, when there are tongues, because y'all was arguing in the church, which was the greatest gift, speaking in tongues and being Speaking on behalf of God, mm -hmm. having prophecy. He said they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. And then he kind of explains it in verse number nine. Why? He says, because we know in part, we prophesize in part. Whatever God reveals to the people through these gifts is a partial revelation. It ain't the whole truth and nothing but the truth. It's just a partial. Why? Because it's necessary for the church where we are right now. So that's why the gifts were given. It was for the church. Yes. It was for the church. It's for the growth of the church and for the church to get understanding. But these gifts was never meant to be eternal. Okay. I was going to explain that. But love is. Yes. Love is. Mm -hmm. The gifts had a purpose, mm -hmm. and the purpose is for the church. And keep in mind now, this letter was never meant for the world. It was meant for the body of believers, yes. for them to get the understanding and to get the knowledge of what love is all about. And so instead of having all this division and confusion amongst the believers, this was not why I speak in tongues, I do this. Well, you know, I guess people say, well, something like, what about today? People. Well, okay, I'm a pastor. I'm a deacon. I'm a mother. Mm. You're so hung up on your title. God is saying, if you ain't got love, mm. if you don't have love, if the pastor doesn't have love, mm. it means nothing. If the deacons don't have love, it means nothing. Right. If the mothers don't have love, it means nothing. If the stewards don't have love, it means nothing. Mm. If the elders don't have love, it means nothing. If the brethren don't have love, Paul said it means nothing. It means nothing. Love should motivate you, and love should be up there as the top. And how do you also treat one another? Yes. Yes. Amen. So then he goes on. In verse 10, he says, But that which is perfect, to begin to explain why prophecies are going to fail and why tongues are going to cease and why everything is going to vanish away. He says, But when that which is perfect has come. Mm -hmm. Has come. What are you talking about? Well, you know, y'all know Jesus has already come. Mm -hmm. He's perfect. But what Paul is talking about, he's coming back again. Right. Yes. Y'all, I've been here. Yes. Y'all need to kill me again. Yes. He is coming back again. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. So since yes. he's coming back again, he said, we already know he has come, yes. but he's coming, coming back. back. Yes. 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 When he came the first time, there was a purpose for his coming. Come on, man. He needed to redeem mankind. Yes. But now he's saying that all the prophecies, all the things is going on. But when that has perfect has come, that which is in part will be done away. Because it becomes unnecessary when you got it right there. Right there. Hallelujah. Thank well, you. What are you talking about? Why would we prophesize about him? And his revelation when we're going to be right there with him. Mm -hmm. He can speak for himself. Right. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. There's no need for the tongue mm -hmm. because he will be there to do all of the talking. Thank you. Yes. yes. And as far as the knowledge, when we come into the full knowledge and we're there with him, we have all knowledge because yes. we have yes. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank so, you. So that's why he was trying to explain y'all fighting over something. That doesn't even matter what you should be looking for, what you're going to gain with her. Lord, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And so he starts explaining some things. He says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, mm -hmm. and I understood as a child, and I thought as a child, 
But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And you know, we can look at it in the physical and say, you know, as a child growing up, how you understood, you know, you can't give children too much information. I know I ran into some children a couple of weeks ago. They saw me. Hey, cousin BBS lady. Uh, they only asked the BBS person at church. Are we gonna be, because we saw you, that means we got BBS tomorrow? No, baby, it means next year. That's next year. I had to realize, you can't give children too much. Because their thought is, they saw me, next year could be tomorrow. They don't understand the concept. I was not about to explain to them babies that they got like a whole eight, nine months before they get your mind to school. But see, that's how it is. Yes. When you came into the body of believers, when you came into the knowledge of Christ, you understood certain things yeah. until you start maturing in the world. That's right. That's and so, and I think about myself as I have matured in my study of Christ. But it takes something to be able to, be able to mature, in other words, to grow. It, it takes something that is an obligation of myself. That means that I need to get more in depth into the quiet time with him so that I can hear him. So it says, you know, he says, so all these things that I spoke, you know, you talk like a child. Mm -hmm. Well, did you believe in Jesus? Yes, I believe in Jesus. But now you have to say, I believe yes. in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. your, your, your language and how you speak is different. And then things that you thought, I don't have to go by what somebody told me. Yes. I go by what I know. Yes. So it says when I became a man, meaning when I matured, uh -huh. I put away the childish things. Yes. But the Corinthians in the church today, this means spiritual gifts were intended for a certain period of time. But it was not always meant to be eternal. There is no place for the spiritual gifts, y'all, in eternity. Uh. What? No. No. None of the gifts that was used in the church uh -huh. is going to be needed on the new earth in the new Jerusalem. All right. All right. All right. Can you be used in heaven? All right. Now, now when you in the midst of glory. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because the gifts is needed on this side. Yes. Not on the other side. All right. That's right. That's right. So get an understanding. Mm -hmm. So it says, for now, I love this verse, we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. And so Paul was using, you know, they didn't have mirrors like we have mirrors today. Mm -hmm. What they would use as for them to be able to see their reflection was a polished brass. They would polish it real, real, real good. Polish it so they could see their reflection. They might like to see how they look. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Let's see how you look. Mm -hmm. But he says that what, what you were looking at mm -hmm. in that polished brass was something that was dimly. You didn't see the actual, see the actual. picture. Mm -hmm. All right. You couldn't All right. actually see yourself. But when you face the face, face, face. Right. You, to you will see things different. So he's saying that, what? So he's, let me break it down to you like this. Now we are seeing things partially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know about God. Yeah. We know all the things of God. We're learning about Him. We've seen things that He's done in our lives. But oh Lord Jesus. Oh Lord. Thank you. Yes. When we are face to face with Him, yes. looking straight at the Lord, straight. Yes. all the things that I thought I knew, mm -hmm. didn't know. Mm -hmm. yes. So I know in part, but then shall I know when I see Him. Yes. And we all say, all I want to see Him. To look upon his face. A song used to say, Oh, I just want to see him. Yes. And then being in the presence of God Almighty, because see, Moses asked to see God. And God said, You can't look at me in your state on this side to see my full, full glory. So what I'm going to let you see is just see the back side of me. So I'm going to let you get a glimpse. When Moses got off the mountaintop, they say, You look like. But see, we ain't got to worry about that. Yes, yes. When we're in glory with him. Yes. We'll be able to commune. We'll be able to be with him. Mm -hmm. 
and all the glory because we will also be in our spiritual bodies yes. to be able to see him. Mm -hmm. And everything that we thought we knew is going to be a revelation for all of us. Right. You know, people ask the question, but why should I believe? I said, why should you not believe? What if everything we have been saying is true? What do you have to lose with your life? Yes. Hallelujah. So, so if people yes. say, well, I don't need to believe, but, but then you lose your life. And then on, on the flip side, if everything we say is not true, then hey. But when you, you lose out right. for all eternity. Oh, yes. So just accept, Self. believe, Come and believe. confess. Yes. Yes. And then he says, and now abide faith. Hope, love, abide. That word abide means endure. Mm -hmm. Endure. Love endures. It perseveres amidst hardship and anything. It's like a soldier in battle. Yes. They don't go to battle just for survival. They go to battle for victory. All right. Yes. I say the soldier. That's right. That's right. a native type of military army. We say the army of the Lord encompasses all yes. of us. Mm -hmm. Not just branching out into different branches. But yes. when you go into battle, they go in there for two things. To survive the battle yes. and to be victorious. Yes. Amen. So it says that, and now by you got faith, because we have faith in, in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's why I trust in this, right? Yes. So it says you got three things that you, as every Christian needs. You got to have faith. Yes. You got to have hope. Because hope keeps you going. Yes. And then you got love. Mm -hmm. But then he breaks it down. He says, now, faith, we know that we as believers have to have faith over here. Mm -hmm. Faith is what gets us to salvation. Yes. Right? But then faith ain't going to be needed. Because mm -hmm. faith is not eternal. All right, what are you talking about, Sister Hunter? Because when you face the faith, you got faith in your face. Yes. yes. Then it says hope. Well, we all are hoping for eternal life, right? Yes. We're looking for hope. When things go bad, we start this hope in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Grandma said this hope on men. Right. So I hope in the Lord. But that's going to cease. Why? Because you're going to be face to face, face with hope. Face. Yes. Yes. So I don't need to hope in the Lord when I got it right there. All right. Yes. But love. Love. But love. Mm. will be eternal. Yes. Because when I'm face to face, mm -hmm. I told y'all God is love. Love yes. is God. I am going to be in love yes. for all eternity. Because love covers a multitude. Love is Him. Yes. So face to face, love is still going to exist for all eternity. Yes. Whereas faith, I just need it over here on this side. <laughs> Hope, I just need it over on this side to keep me going. Yes. But love, I always gonna need love. Yes. I'm gonna always seek love. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna always be about love. And I'm gonna always love to love the God Almighty. Yes. So that's yes. what it's all about. He said, so if he said, don't stop the confusion, stop the fighting over mm -hmm. those trivial things. Mm -hmm. yes. Most important thing we need to do is love. When I look at this country, mm -hmm. When I look at this country, we're in a pitiful state. Yes. yes. We're in a pitiful state. Yes, we are. Because we don't have love. Right. Everybody else is motivated by everything else but love. Right. But it's up to the church yes. to be the example for the rest of the world. Right. So if we were started right. here in these United States, mm -hmm. we would carry the rock. Right. Yes. And we would show love. Yes. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is good. Love is God. Yes. And there's so much freedom in just love. You know it's so much easier to love than to hate. Yes. Love frees you. Love takes off the burden. Mm -hmm. Love takes love takes off the shackles yes. that bind you. Uh -huh. Love forgives. Yes. Love is love. Yes. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.